has been good to us, the internet. And I want to bless the Lord for his goodness and for his mercies. He has indeed kept us and we want to thank him. Hallelujah. We don't deserve his goodness, but his mercies endured forever. Hallelujah. Welcome. Thank you for joining. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening for your grace and your mercies. We thank you for your love. You are worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, as we come this evening, Lord, to share your words one more time. We pray, Lord, for your anointing to be in this place. We pray, Lord God, for good service from the internet, Lord. We pray, Lord Jesus, that those who are listening this evening will be blessed. We pray for a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, gift of faith, discerning spirit, Lord. All that you are productive evening. We wait on you now and we depend on you, Lord. Have thine own way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, I just want to give God thanks. As we always say that we have no copyright for these songs that we play, but we, we play them for worship. And so I want to thank you again for being with us. And we pray we're blessed. The Lord has given me a word this evening. I want to declare that from the outset, that um, it's going to be a very challenging word. It's going to be a very challenging word. Challenging because where, the, where, where we are in Christendom now, there are some things that we have gotten comfortable with. And um, the Lord is calling to us. And so my theme this evening is, when last have you seen it? When last have you seen it? And someone said, what are you talking about, Pastor? I'm talking about when last have you seen the manifestation of the power of God in a tangible way, in miracles, healings, deliverance from demonic forces, when last have you seen it? Operating when a man of God, a woman of God, is in the pulpit. Let us talk. St. Mark 1, verse 21 to 28, and as I always say, make sure you bring up pencil, pen, paper, the Bible to let us go through the scriptures. The scripture says, Matthew 1 verse 21, and they went into Capernaum and straight on the Sabbath day entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astounded at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For, what author for with authority commandeth he, even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. And I want to back it up with the scripture from the book of Acts, chapter 16. Acts 16, verse 14 to 20. The Bible said, Afterward, he appeared unto the level as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go into all the world 
and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached them where the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Again, my theme this evening is when last have you seen it? What I read about that happened to Jesus what I read about that happened in the lives of the apostles. When last have you seen it? I want to focus a little on the, 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 the ministry of Jesus. But I want to begin with by looking at the church today. And when I say church, I'm not speaking of your church on um, where were your churches. I'm not speaking of your particular church. I'm speaking of the church as a whole. The international, universal church, a body of Christ. We are experiencing as a church a great falling away of the believers. We are experiencing it. The church as a whole is not attractive and receiving a level of support that it is, this is what the word I'm using now, that it's, it's empowered to attract. The level of support that it is empowered to develop. And the level of support that it is empowered to maintain. It is not there. And brother pastor, sister there, we can fool ourselves. But the church as a whole, as a body, maybe your church has 20,000 people. 30,000. Thank God. But I'm speaking of the church body as a whole, as a global body of Christ. There is an aversion to growing ministries through the manifestation of healing. There's an aversion through to casting out devils and the working of miracles. Individual churches have been doing it, but I'm not speaking to you as a church house and a ministry by itself i'm talking the, the body of christ in general you will note that individual ministries will experience the manifestation of power working on miracles casting on the devils but globally there has been a shift from that aspect of ministry globally and i wanted to speak honestly this evening and if you're not capable of speaking honestly listen because I'm talking to you there's a generation of believers mainly those that come to church since 2000 who are asking the question where is a church that you have seen read about in the book of Acts there's a generation of believers who have never, ever, in some instances, ever seen somebody being freed of demonic possession. Never, ever seen a blind receiving sight. Never, ever received, seen the, the cripple getting up out of a wheelchair and walk. There's a generation of believers that don't believe what we believe anymore. Because we talk about the book of Acts. But they're not seeing it. Let's look at the scriptures and motivate ourselves a little. Let's look at the scriptures. Let's look at um, the St. Matthew 
4, verse 17. But before I go there, I just, let me just take that a little bit, step by step. I want to ask the question, is there a balance? Should there be a balance? And what is the balance? By that I'm asking, you know, when you speak like this, people said, well, you know, you need to balance the thing. You don't need to be, um, be, 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 be getting up and seeing those things in the church every day because, um, you know, God has changed. God is working a different way now. Um, is, is not doing the things that the apostles anymore. Let us talk to the apostles. And my question is, when did the church as a global entity move away from the many signs and wonders that were wrought among the people? When did the church of God move away from that? I want to ask a question. Is there an anti-miracle spirit in the church of God today? Is there something in the church of God today where people are anti the moving of God where you say um, miracles in the church? Because you know, <laughs> I have heard personally, I have heard pastors, deacons, members of church ministries, Preach against the era of ministry to the point where this era where the manifestation of the power, where they have labeled it using negative connotations and words. Brothers and sisters, if you speak to the average pastor today and ask that pastor, when last have you experienced miracles in a church? They will tell you that God don't have to do that anymore. There are big organizations, large, large, multi-million dollar, and maybe multi-billion dollar organization. They will tell you that speaking in tongues is demonic. And it's not necessary in this time. <laughs> they will tell you that that type of manifestation is outdated. They will tell you that it is just not necessary. And I'm asking the question. I'm asking the question. Who authorized the church to move away from what Jesus instructed the church to achieve who authorized the church and are we too lazy to rely on the ministry of Jesus are we aware that the church of 2024 is a continuation of the church of Acts of the Apostles or we thought Acts of the Apostles was a different dispensation. People are teaching now that the, the time, the Bible time, you know, let's say, during Bible time, and Bible time for them mean during the time when Jesus is on earth, during the time when the apostles were here. So aren't we in the Bible time now? Where are we in ministry? What is happening? When last have you seen Bible time in this our time? And, you know, I'm not accusing anyone. Neither am I making anybody to feel less than. But I'm speaking as the Lord lays it on my heart. You know, the man that was healed in, in, in St. John, chapter 9 when he was healed the priests and the, and the authorities came at him and said who heal you 
By the way, the man who healed, as far as we are concerned, that you are saying is, is this and is that, is Joseph's son. The man said, Sir, or sirs, if he wasn't from God, he couldn't have done for me what he has done. It's only because he's from God. And, and when I saw that word, it struck something in my spirit. God, a man was making a point that the only way Jesus could, could heal him was because Jesus was being anointed by God. The only way we're going to have working of miracles, casting out of devils, the only way we're going to have a pushback in this time because church now has become if you're not careful, a staged pantomime or a staged act where everything is choreographed, nicely choreographed and presented. And people go and we clap and we dance and we go home, still demon possessed. Here you go, glory to God. Still spiritually bound, still spiritually. Um, shackled no deliverance matter of fact lifestyle has not changed since I got baptized two three years ago nothing has changed we continue living as we used to live because I just want to know that I am a Christian quote unquote but talk to me this evening Let's look at the ministry of Jesus. How did he begin his ministry? Jesus began his ministry. And, and, and here, I did ask a question, is there a balance? So I want to help to strike the balance. And to see if I can provoke us to jealousy again. To see if I can inspire us. Oh, glory to God. To feel a craving, a desire for the ministry of Jesus. And this is what I'm saying. For the ministry of Jesus. I never said the ministry of a great, um, a quote-unquote prophet, apostle, prophet, this, that. No, I'm talking about the ministry of Jesus. Listen to Jesus. Balance it now. Jesus began his ministry teaching. The Bible said that when they came, the, they went to the Capernaum and straight on the Sabbath, he entered into the synagogue and he did what? And he taught. They were astonished at his teaching. And this is St. Mark's, um, you know, re recollection of what happened. They were astonished at his doctrine. Why? Because he never recited a poem. He never recited platitudes he taught as one that had authority I tried to do what authority to to speak the word and then never speak like his cries it tells me therefore that there is a way in church help us Jesus in the global church where we can go to the podium and all we are reciting are words that we have rehearsed Words that will sound like that we should be saying. But when it comes to <laughs> manifestation of the power of the Holy Ghost, it, it's far from us. Why? Because we ourselves are not even anointed to handle the word. But we have been schooled out to, you know, preach. Jesus spoke as one. Having authority and not as the normal man describes. Secondly, Jesus expanded his ministry by addressing the physical needs of the people. The Bible said, and there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. An unclean spirit, demonic, was obsessed with a demon, was possessed by a demon. He cried out, saying, Let us alone. 
What have we to do with thee? The demon recognized Jesus. Thou Jesus of Nazareth. I do come to destroy us. The demon said, I know who you are. You are the Holy One of God. Now a demon knows Jesus. Hallelujah. Talk to me, church. And Jesus was the manifestation of power now. Rebuked him. Hold your peace and come out of him. And do what? Come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, rocked him body, the unclean spirit cried a loud voice and did what? Came out of him. Why? Jesus was setting a pattern. Because before he left, he said, you shall cast out devils. So before he empowered us to do it, he showed us how it is to be done. As a matter of fact, he opened our minds and our, 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 he exposed us to it to say, if I do it, you can do it. Greater works, Jesus said, shall I do than what you have done. So Jesus cast out on his spirit. He not only catered um, to the teaching of the word, he, he dealt with a man's life. What a man is demon possessed. Lord, depending on the type of demon I seen him. Sometimes it's a sexual deviant demon. Sometimes a demon of murder. A demon of drug abuse. A demon of drunkenness. A demon of um, a witchcraft. All sort of things. And when that man or woman is freed from that demonic force, oh, you're going to see a different person. Who will do it? It is the power God has authorized us, empowered us, commissioned us to go and to do it. I'm talking to us this evening. When last have you seen it? In your ministry. Thirdly, his ministry was one that catered to the whole man. Body, soul, and spirit and I want to ask today what is the focus of the church today we have a lot of qualified preachers more qualified than this the command sitting in front of the camera here this evening we have a lot more who are you know I've, I've, I've had large ministries and are doing tremendous um, things but I'm asking you, that ministry, are we as a church following the footsteps of Jesus? I've been exposed to pastors who tell me that if I want a hundred more people in my congregation Sunday coming, there are people around that I can sign a contract with them. And they will go out there and make sure I have 100 people extra in front of me. And all I'm going to be doing is sharing financial um, proceeds of the church with them. And their job is to get me more people to come and sit in front of me. Not worshippers now. Attendees. So that, I look, so that when the camera show and the crowd, we have a lot of people in church looking good. But, you know... I, I wouldn't have acquired that church, that pastor would do that yet. Because if when he brings them come, you preach to them and preach Jesus to them. Preach Jesus to them. They can be saved. But I'm recognizing that, that we don't even, we, we can't even fill the little church we have with, with bodies. Because there's nothing to impress the unsaved to come sit in front of us. We are not seeing the ministry of Jesus in our church. Lord help us, Jesus. I know by now a lot of people vexed me and gone. Thank you, Jesus. But call them back. But I want to show you some of the actions that Jesus manifested during his ministry. During his ministry. St. Matthew 4, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, the balance, Jesus never do one at the expense of the other. He always preached 
the gospel of the kingdom. So he always preached man to come from sin and to be repaired for heaven. He always does that. So the church must keep doing that. That's what Jesus did. No problem. Our ministry should see people getting the Holy Ghost. Our ministry should see people being baptized and join and, and become a part of the church. For the Bible said, for he added to the church daily such as to be saved. That must happen. There's no doubt about that. And we have maximized on that. Oh, we have done exceptionally well with that. We, we, listen up. We, we have... We, <laughs> but the challenge I'm having is we have filled the church but they're not staying. They're not staying. They're not motivated to stay. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, there's a song one time that said I'm all churched out. Because if you're not careful enough, people will get saved because when man hear about Jesus, it breaks man's heart. And every man need Jesus. No matter the drug dealer he becomes. No matter the, the, um, the, the scammer he becomes. No matter the, the murderer. Every man needs Jesus. And many years ago, in my hometown, country Jamaica, um, the, the, the most notorious criminals, when they are going out to, to, to do their killings, they have, a, they have a, 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 um, a New Testament in their pocket somewhere. Because they recognize that they, they recognize their mortality. But they say killing people as their job. I'm not sanctioning it. I'm just saying to you that every man needs Jesus. So people come to church. They will hear a gospel message. They will get saved. Give them one year, two years. And they begin to wonder, so what next? Just to come, roll call, come sit down, hold up praise and go home. What next? They want to see the manifestation of the power of the Holy Ghost. They want to see the acts of the apostles that we talk about. And so when they not see it, my God, they get bored. Let's talk. St. Matthew 4 verse 23 to 25. Jesus. And Jesus went about all Galilee. Doing what? Teaching in the synagogues. And doing what? And preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Very good. And this is this part. And healing all manner of sickness. And all manner of disease among the people. Yes. This is the part that is troubling, that is troubling the church now. This part. And healing all manner of sickness. And all manner of disease among the people. We don't want to exercise the faith. Hey, glory to God. For God to use us to cater to the man. Because as far as we are concerned, I have never heard Jesus ask one of these people, come here, do you believe in me? Before he heals them. The Bible said, once they come, he heals them. And look what happened. And his fame went throughout all Syria, not Jerusalem, Syria, Syria, Syria. A place was not in support of the Jews. But when they saw what Jesus did, his fame spread throughout even the anti-Jewish states. And what did the people do? In Syria, they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments, and those which are possessed with devils, and those which are lunatics, mad people, psychiatrically imbalanced, and those that had the palsy. And what did Jesus do? He healed them. Church of God, when did we give up this mandate? Who authorized us to give it up? People are coming to church, sick and go home sicker.
what what happened when he began to heal and there followed him what great multitudes of people from where galilee decapolis jerusalem judea and far beyond jordan you know we have instituted a lot of social programs in our churches as a means of getting more people to come to church we have introduced um pantries where when they um finish worshiping they get their dinner we have introduced um areas where we have we have employed our own doctors to take care of our people we have introduced areas where if they have a mortgage to pay and they can't pay, they come to the church and the church pay the mortgage. And so people are of an allegiance to the church. Listen carefully now. They have an allegiance to the church because the church is catering to their 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 everyday um, human needs. But I want to say to us that when this church began, uh, but uh, when Jesus began to teach the kingdom, he never pointed them to no church just to go to that church and not that one, you know. As a matter of fact, Jesus never had a church to go to. He went to the synagogue because that was the, the organized place of worship at the time. And when he went to the synagogue, he teach the kingdom. They thought the kingdom was preaching the laws and teaching of Moses. The, the, the laws of the, the, um, the, the judges and the prophets. And that's what they knew. Jesus never knew anything about Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. It was after he was ascended that Matthew, Mark, Luke and John wrote Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. You know, Luke wrote Acts and he wrote the book of St. Luke. Great and glorious physician, he wrote it. Documenting what happened among the disciples, among the apostles. But Jesus never have first Corinthians and second Corinthians to read. What he had to read was the Torah. The Torah, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, sorry, um, Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the five first books. The Torah, that's Greek. Pentateuch, right, is Hebrew. Same five books. So the Jews, uh, the Jewish people refer to the Pentateuch, or, or an Orthodox Jew refer to the Torah, same first five books of the Bible. That is what Jesus taught from. He read from the, the scriptures. But he also read from the prophets. So he read Isaiah or Esaias. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel. And when he closed the book, he said, now it is revealing your sight. I am he. He never had, um, so he never had Philemon a revelation to read from. But he read from the prophets. And he taught to the prophets. Because the prophets were always pointing us to Jesus. Joshua was pointing us to Jesus. Hallelujah. And so all of these um, writers and prophets over time, after Deuteronomy, they were all pointing us to Jesus. So when Jesus came, it, and, and Matthew began to, Matthew recorded it. Matthew said, for his name shall be called Jesus. Why? For he shall save his people from their sins. In other words, he was manifesting what was prophesied long ago by Daniel, long ago by Isaiah, Long ago, by many prophets over time, pointing of it all to Jesus, here is Jesus. But when Jesus came, what I want us to look at is that when Jesus came, he came with a blueprint, his own blueprint, which is preach the kingdom, point man to Jesus, point man to a life. You see, the kingdom of God is not um, meat and bread, you know. That is just catered to the, to the man. But it is also important. But that's the killer is joy, peace in the Holy, and, and the Holy Ghost. So, so there's more to the kingdom. But, but I'm not going down here tonight. 
what I want us to understand that Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom, but Jesus also maximized and manifested his power through healing of the body, casting out of diseases, casting out of devils, seeing people that were um, psychiatrically imbalanced, getting back their, 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 their balance and became sane people. Where Jesus raised the dead. You know, when Jesus called Lazarus from the grave, they said, never, ever have ever seen a man dead and come up from it. What Jesus was saying, he's saying, I'm, I'm laying the blueprint because when I go back to heaven, which I'm going to go back to heaven, I want you who are here on earth, call my bride, the church, to do what I do. Because you're going to see results. Let's look at St. Luke 4, verse 36 to 44. It says, And they were all amazed and spoke among themselves. What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirit, and they come out. And the fame of him went out in every place of the country round about. Church, if we want to preach Jesus in a practical way, begin to manifest the power and see people on take bus, take plane from wherever to come to church to see what? The manifestation of power. The Bible said he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife was taken with a great fever. And they besought him for her, sick in the body. And he stood over her and do what? My God, he rebuked the fever. And it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto him. Oh, I realize that tonight not many people are infused with the teaching. But I'm going to teach it. Because, you know, if we're going to, if we're going to represent Jesus, we must do it right. If we're going to represent Jesus, we must do what he does. And so I wanted to call your friends and tell them Bible class is still going on. A little tough tonight, but it's going on. And tell them to log on into Bible class. And to let me help somebody. Amen. To be saved. Because the, the challenge we're having is that every day we come to church. And whether on a major day, it's the same people coming to church. You can almost tick off at the doorway. Who going come? Present, absent, present, present, present. So we're not seeing the manifestation of the power. Because for one thing, we're not inviting any unsaved. And listen, you will not see the manifestation of God and people that are well. Jesus said, he that is, only he that is sick in a physician. And only he that is demon possessed, you will see demons cast out of them. How am I going to see that? Bring the unsaved to the kingdom of, to the church of God. And watch God manifest. Go for those that are sick, wheelchair, blind, dumb, deaf. And minister to them and watch God use your ministry to manifest his glory. Oh Lord, Pastor, we can't do that because suppose it don't work. It's not you, my friend. It's not you. It's God through you. But if you don't have the raw material, which is the unsaved, the sick, the lame, the demon possessed to deal with, no miracle will happen in your ministry. Oh Lord. So it means that we have to go back to what? Evangelism. Watch this. Now when the sun was setting, Jesus now, all that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. Jesus, you heal sick. Yes, you're doing it. Listen to this. And the devils came out of many, crying and saying, <laughs> Thou art the Son of Christ, the Son of God. And rebuking them, suffer them not to speak, for they knew he was Christ. And when it was day, listen to this, he departed into a desert place. Into a what? Desert place. Desert, dry, sun. Sun. And the people sought him and came unto him in the desert. And listen to this. And stayed him that he should not depart from them. Listen to Jesus now. I must preach the gospel of the kingdom to other cities also. For there too am I said. Before am I said. 
And what he did? He preached the synagogue of Galilee. Jesus healed the sick and preached the kingdom of God. Even in the desert. These days we have palatial places. Nice padded seats. Can hold 200 people. And today only 50 came to church. Because there are 250. Not impressed who are SC over the past two years. Not impressed and not going back. So we have the space. We have the, the, um, the ambience. But the people not coming because they're not seeing God manifested among us. Stop calling the teacher tonight and let us, let us, let us together repent. Because no, God never authorized any of us to take healing and miracle work in the church. He never gave us that authority. And I'm going to show you in scriptures. St. John 2 verse 1 to 10. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and the disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. Let's see the manifestation. His mother said unto the servant, Whatsoever he said unto you, do it. There were six water pots of stone. After the man of the purifying of the Jews, they brought those water pots to throw water on your hand, to wash your hand, and to wash off your feet. That was their thing before you could go to people's house. Because of dust in those days. But that was their principle. Before you sit to eat, wash your hands, wash your dust off your feet. So there, there was water there for, for washing hands and feet. <laughs> Jesus said, you know what you know? Fill these water pots with water for me. And fill it up to the brim. And he said unto them, draw what now? And go give the governor the feast. And they did it. When the governor drank the water, the water was made into wine. And he said, What are they? Where did you get this from? And he said unto them, he, he called the bridegroom, the governor, and said, Listen, every man give us, set forth good wine at the beginning of your, 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 your celebration. When many are well drunk, then, then that it is worse. You bring out, but you have brought out the best wine at the last, at the back end. Jesus was let, giving us the blueprint. He was letting people know that although your life was a wreck before you knew Jesus, when you know Jesus, get baptized, get the Holy Ghost. It will be the best of your life after that. He was setting the blueprint. So somebody said, when I knew Mr. Joe, he was a terrible fellow. Today, I can't understand what happened to him. He's transformed because he has come in contact with Jesus. The best of Mr. Joe. The best wine. Yes, man. You see, this, the Bible said, this beginning of miracles, the Jesus in Cana of Galilee. And manifested his glory. And his disciples believed on him. Listen. People are not going to take the church serious. If they don't see the manifestation of the power of God in the church. What we see nowadays leaves a lot to be desired. Think on these things. At the beginning therefore. I call it the Alpha and the Omega. At the beginning. Jesus started with teaching and miracles. At the end, when he was about to be trans, go back to heaven. Jesus started his ministry with working miracles and preaching the message of the kingdom. That was the blueprint that he left. But before he was ascended, the end now, the Omega, he made some pronouncement. He said unto his disciples, go into all the world and do what I do. Preach the gospel to every creature. Preach the gospel to every creature. Go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We have had some people who have messed up the word of God. And caused the, the, the division between Africa and Europe. Should never be. Because Jesus ever preached a nationality and personality and region. He preached a kingdom. And the kingdom was not African, um, German, Spanish. The kingdom is anybody who accept Jesus. Come on now. Come on now. Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. 
But he that believe it not shall be damned. Hear the word that Jesus gave us now. Before he left. He said and these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall do what? Follow you. In my name shall you cast out devils. You shall speak with new tongues. Stop calling the bishop and listen to the word of God. I'm reading from, from, from the word of God. They shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It is not my viewpoint. Neither is it a either or neither how in other words. Either you preach the word or you do miracles. It's a, it's a combination of both. Jesus said, preach the word. But signs shall also follow your ministry. Many of us are so caught up in driving Rolls Royce and, and um, Bentley that we just, we just want to have a wonderful time. We have so and so in front of us and we have no glorious time. We get up there and speak a, a lot of sophistries and, you know, and, and, and philo men's philosophies and, 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 and don't have the Holy Ghost. As such, we can't even manifest the glory of God because we don't have no power. We're as weak as a bat. Come on now, church of God. But, but I spoke a lot about Jesus. How did the disciples, the apostles admit now? The apostles followed Jesus. What we have today are ministries with great preachers of the kingdom. Excellent preachers. But the world is waiting for a return. On a global scale of the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit in the church the, the world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of god the results are too glaring for us to ignore listen to this and i'm going to make the point when you get the holy ghost you know what's in you the same spirit that rose christ from the dead is in you once you get the holy ghost you are a part of the body of Christ. Holy glory to God. Multitudes follow Jesus when they saw his miracles. Multitudes follow the apostles when they manifested the raw power of the Holy Ghost. Multitudes follow them. And somebody said, boy, you know, when a lot of people come to see your church it's because your principles are low, so people love to go where principles are low. The devil is a liar and says his mother-in-law. I want to tell you something. What we have done, you see, we have justified our lack of manifestation with laziness. And if, if Bishop Golding ever come back with this teaching again, we, 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 um, we, we, we shut him down, if you can. <laughs> because this, this is not necessary this is a new church the new church you now the young people don't want to see this they want they want to see um they want music and they, really you start make two people two dopey rise up from a, from a grave there two dead people you speak to them i commanded to come back to life in the name of jesus i command a demon to come out of you I command, amen, that blindness to go. I command, in the name of Jesus, I command that, that deafness to go in the name of Jesus. I command you to receive back, amen, your speech in the name of Jesus. I command, hallelujah, that cancer to be dried up in the name of Jesus. You don't have place to keep people because people are becoming to, to benefit from the manifestation of healing. Is when they come now, you must preach to them the gospel of the kingdom and still see to it that they are healed. The mistake we are making is that they only come for fish and bread. No problem. Come for the fish and bread. But while you're getting the fish and the bread, I'm going to preach to you the gospel of the kingdom. The important thing is get them in front of you. That you can teach to them the gospel of the, of the kingdom. You know, Let's look at the apostles. Let's look at how God used them. Let's look at how God manifested through them. Because we who are carrying the, the, um, the mantle of the, of, 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 of the gospel now, we are lazy. 
you know we are lazy brothers and sisters we are lazy listen up i'm gonna make a point and i know half of my audience is gonna shut me off everything happened with god in two, two weeks of prayer jesus passed what you're saying we need to pray i hear you know everything every time you're going to um weed the, the, the grass sharp the machine but no use you put it on the so the grass grow up don't chop the grass with the sharp machine sharp the machine and put it down pretty soon you have a woodland with a sharp machete and nothing after that we need to manifest the power you don't <laughs> you don't pray when the demon must be cast out he must shunder we have the power of the Holy Ghost. Cast on the demons in the name of Jesus. Tell the demon to go in the name of Jesus. And then afterwards, in your quiet time, you're praying out for God to continue to use you. In other words, what I'm saying, prepare yourself for ministry before you get into ministry. Because when you get into ministry, it's not a time to pray now. It's a time to manifest we have the authority. <laughs> we can shut down cities. We can shut down avenues. But guess what? We are not prepared to put God to the test. Listen to this. And great, Acts 6 verse 11 to 16. And great fear came upon all, of all the church. And upon many as heard these things. And by the set back, listen to this, not Jesus now. By the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Prior warrior, I said to you, all you do every day is pray. Manifest some power now and utilize the power that God has given to you. Every time you're Mr. Farmer, you're sharp in the machine. Use the machine. We have the authority. Use it. And stop quarreling the bishop. And go use the authority that God has given to us. Listen to verse 13 of Acts chapter 6. And the rest, does no man join himself to them. But the people magnified them. In other words, the people were, were in awe of them. In other words, the people noted that these guys were not ordinary guys. These guys were doing some things that they saw Jesus do. What is happening in our ministries that, that people are saying, I read about it, that Jesus did it, and I see it happen in the ministry at 2 for, for this road. Come on now. Listen to this. Acts 6 verse 14. And believers, when man see the power, were the more added to the church. Listen to this. Multitudes. Multi what? Only for people. Both of men and women. Both of what? Men and women. I was in church on Sunday. And I was making a point that there were about 50 ladies and four men. So the men were on the corner smoking weed, um, doing all sorts of things, soliciting other women, while their women wives and girlfriends were in church. So the men send their women to church, but they're not coming. They're not convinced. They're not convinced, you know. But the Bible said, and believers were the more added to the church. Multitudes both of men and women. Man, the men in general have stopped going to church. It's a woman. You know, if if, if women stop coming to church, you know, your church going to close tomorrow morning. Listen to this. And believers are more added to the church, multitudes both of men and of women, in so much that they brought for the sick into the streets. And lay them on, listen to this, on beds and couches in the street. Listen to this. That at least the shadow 
my God, of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. What do they want him? Even the very shadow of Peter, God was using that shadow to heal people. <laughs> there came also multitudes out of the cities round about Jerusalem, bringing what? Sick folks. And them which are vexed with unclean spirits. And they were healed every one. Not Jesus, no. The apostles. We are the apostles of today. You know, we get into a lot of argument about a person calling himself apostle this and prophet this. We argue about everything these days. Everything become an issue. How about us arguing about how come we not see the manifestation of the power of God in the church? Start a conversation. Let us let us start a big conversation now. Let us have some meetings on TV, on, on television, on, on um, Instagram, on Facebook, on all of your social media. Let's start a let's start a revolution, a tsunami of conversation. Why we not see the manifestation of the power of God in the church? And why don't we start now? When it manifests and we reach a stage where we get jealous now and, and, and riled up now and, 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 and motivated now, we come together and 50 of us put a big tent down the road and all the cities round about, we start sending out buses now to bring in the sick, lame and lazy. And we this, get good preachers and preach a kingdom. But God Almighty begin to lay hands on the sick, begin to cast out devils. Listen now. The authority is going to get your attention. Because when that begins to happen, we don't need someone police again, you know. <laughs> we don't need someone police and soldiers again, you know. Because the glory of God, Sister Renee, will take over the place. My God. Then you can sleep with your house open. My God. Then you can, oh Jesus, arose no more orderly. You know why? Because these demons of road rage that we have here will be dealt with. Let us start a revolution. Let us start a conversation. Let us start a tsunami of argument. Why aren't we seeing? When last have you seen it? What? The manifestation of the power of the Holy Ghost. Let us start that revolution now. Let us stop talking about who is apostle and who is bishop and who is this. Let's begin to say now. Who is not seeing the manifestation of the power of the Holy Ghost? Bishop, apostle, whoever they are, bring them in and let's have that conversation. I just lay it on my heart as the Lord lay, give it to me. I pray you have been blessed. If it make you angry, may God bless you. If it make you motivated, may God bless you. But we want to start a revolution where we see the manifestation of the power of the Holy Ghost. In America, in Britain, in London, in France, in, in Luxembourg, in, in Nigeria, in Nigeria, South Africa. My God, Swaziland. We have a tsunami of the power of God across the global world. What a change. The wars, my God, would just come to an end. And we'd have to see more people come to accept Jesus Christ. As a personal savior, preparing themselves to be a part of the kingdom of God. Jesus, we pray now, Lord, that the words spoken will form life. Not about Bishop Golding, Lord. It's about what you require from your people. Hear my prayer now, I pray. Let us start a revolution, Lord. That conversation. God, I know you are waiting for the manifestation. The world is waiting, Lord, for the manifestation of the sons of God. Thank you for hearing, we pray. Bless this venture every time your kingdom come. In Jesus' name, amen. And my brother, sister, may God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God keep you. Hey, glory to God. May God give us that desire to start a revolution, that conversation to see the manifestation of the power of God in the church. God bless you. See you next week, same place, same time. Another move of God.
Thank you for joining. Thank you for being a part. God bless you. See you next week. In Jesus' name. Amen.